Hold on to your seats. It's another Jet Drive. Jet Drive. Still trying. Uh, anyways, welcome to another James Arnold Taylor Drive. Jet. You call me Jet. I don't know where Jet started. Um, I think Colette Sunderman, who is a voice director, who's uh, responsible for casting me in many different things, as uh, the voice of uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi the first time, as a matter of fact, in Star Wars, The Clone Wars, the micro-series. I believe that Colette was one of the first people to call me Jat, because J-A-T. Now, because I'm James Taylor, I'm James Arnold Taylor, because of obvious reasons there's another James Taylor. Although I say obvious reasons, a lot of you who are younger may know me as James Taylor and not know him, but there, was a, there, is, there is a singer, a, a wonderful singer, whom uh, I, I love all his music, uh, named James Taylor. And so I am not named after him. It's just a coincidence. And so when I joined the Screen Actors Guild, I could not be James Taylor because he's already part of the Screen Actors Guild. And you can only have one person with one name in the guild as a member. So then a lot of times what you do is you add in a middle initial. Well, there already was a James S. Taylor. So I couldn't be James A. Taylor, which Arnold is my real middle name. So I had to be first name, middle name, sec last name is what I had to be. So I chose to be James Arnold Taylor because it's my real name. As a kid, I went by Jamie, J-A-M-E-Y, not J-A-M-I-E or J-A-I-M-E, J-A-M-E-Y. It's more masculine. But then there was this little show called The Bionic Woman, and it was Jamie Summers. And when I was a kid, that show was very big. And so I got called Jamie Summers a lot. So I decided to change it to the more formal James. And ever since then, I have been Sir James. Yes. So James is my name's Don't Wear It Out. Long way around here on this chat drive for a topic that is not what the topic was going to be about. In fact, I don't even remember what the topic was going to be. Hmm. Oh yes, I was gonna tell some stories. You know, people ask about uh, uh, heroes of mine. And I've mentioned before in, in blogs and vlogs and stories and interviews, Don Messick is one of my heroes. Don Messick was the voice of Boo Boo Bear, Papa Smurf, Scooby-Doo. He was the original voice of Scooby-Doo before the brilliant Frank Welker took over for him after Mr. Messick passed away. Um, Don Messick was an amazing voice actor, and really, uh, he and Mel Blanc are just as astounding, I think. They both have so many amazing characters to their credit, and uh, I got to work with him when I was a young man, when I was still, I, I believe, still a teenager. Yeah, I think I was about 19. I worked in radio, as I've mentioned in my other vlogs. I worked at a local radio station in my hometown of Santa Barbara, KTYD. It was the rock station. But the other thing I did, see, now a lot of you ask, how do you get your voices out there and stuff? I don't know if this is still the case, but for me, what I did, when I, because I knew I wanted to do voice acting, I sent my demos, which at the time, because I worked in radio and I had commercials, I had done a lot of commercial work and stuff, so I had a bunch of of things already recorded in town and I was responsible for writing and producing the commercials at the radio station because I was the production director. So I would cut my demos together and I would, uh, which is again, just a compilation of some of your favorite work or best work or you know little snippets of it. I would get those to the various ad agencies in town. Now Santa Barbara didn't have a ton of ad agencies, but there was still a couple. I think there was maybe two or three. So I sent my demos, my tapes, and they literally were cassette tapes back then, because this is the 80s, because I, again, am an old man. Um, I sent my, my cassettes out to all the ad agencies. Now, let me say something about this also. When I did this, I made sure I was meticulous about it. There's a lot of people, and through the years, my many, many years of being in voiceover and voice acting and radio and television and all this, I've had a lot of people send me demos. And a lot of times they will send you like a CD or a cassette. Uh, nowadays you all can pretty much just send a, a, a sound file and that's what you would do or it'd be on your SoundCloud or what have you, which is great. But people would send things and they'd like handwrite on a CD and stuff. I always made sure that if I was sending a tape or a CD, I would type it up 
you know, back then it was just typewriters, so I pretty much I had to type the labels. You had to go and get the Avery labels for cassette tapes, and I would get the typewriter and I would type it up really nice. James Arnold Taylor, you know, voice demo and, and 60 seconds, and I'd put the date or what have you. That's an important thing. Presentation is very important. I have always been a stickler for presentation. I like things to be good. Even these jet drives, I try to make sure that you know all the pieces flip around nice and the graphics are good and you can read everything. It's important. So any of you that are putting demos together, headshots, websites, featuring you and your stuff, make sure it's clean, nice, precise, has all the proper information in all the right places, easy to find. You don't want people having to search for things about you, okay? So make sure you do that. Make sure you, you, you go through, and, and if, you, if you're like, I don't know if I have everything, show it to a friend, show it to family members, show it to various people and have them look at it and go, you know, what's missing, what isn't, you know, what, what should I do? Get some opinions on it, people that you trust. Not everybody, don't go crazy, because then you can go crazy trying to please everybody. But, you know, a few trusted friends. So anyways, I had demos, I sent them out to uh, the various ad agencies and several of them called me back because they knew I had worked in town, I was a DJ, all of that. And they would use me on their commercials as well as the commercials I did for the radio station because the stuff I did at the radio station I didn't get paid for, it was just part of my job. The stuff I would do for ad agencies I'd get paid for. Now this was before I was a union actor. I was just a, a radio actor uh, and I would get paid anywhere from 50 to $100 for a commercial to do my voice. And one day, the ad agency that I worked with, I'm sorry, it was, it was, gosh, over 30 years ago. I don't, I don't remember it now, the name of them, but they were great folks. And they called me up and they said, we have a commercial that we're doing where you're gonna play the voice of a house with new shingles on it. It's gonna be a cartoon house. And we're getting Don Messick to voice the old house that is next door to you with the old shingles. And I about lost my mind. Don Messick already to me was this gigantic hero of mine, again from all of his work, Mr. Ranger, Boo Boo Bear, Papa Smurf, Scooby Doo, uh, uh, Race Bannon uh, from Johnny Quest, all these fantastic, I mean just amazing, his, his, vo his voices are wonderful. And Don Messick had this great way of, you know, he would do these kind of announcery voices or, oh Yogi, Mr. Ranger isn't gonna like, and he was of course Mr. Ranger. Yogi, oh come on, Yogi! You know he had just—I don't know—he had this great voice. I loved him. And Don Messick was not a huge guy. He was about my height. I'm five four. It seemed like he was about that. Maybe he was five six. I don't know. Maybe a little taller. I don't know. But he was this wonderful, sweet character actor. And so I got to work with him. And I got to work with him at his home studio. So they give me the address, and it was out in Montecito. Uh, many of you may have seen Montecito on the news lately. There was a uh, massive flooding, very, very tragic. Um, it's hit me and my family very hard. We lost a friend in that flood. Um, it, was, it was a terrible thing that's happened here recently in Montecito. But Montecito is a, a beautiful, beautiful area in Santa Barbara where a lot of very wealthy people live. Oprah Winfrey's uh, ranch is there. Michael Douglas, um, Gene Hackman, Steve Martin, all these famous people live in Montecito and the hills there, and it's a lovely, lovely space. So I drive to Montecito, and I pull up in his driveway, and he's got two cars there, a blue car and a brown car. The brown car's license plate said Scooby-Doo. The blue car's license plate said Papa Smurf. I, it was just so great. And in his back house, he had a, like a back house where his studio was. And it was a classic old recording studio, because this again was in the 80s, so everything was reel-to-reel, -reel, which is tape recordings. Reel-to-reels were, you have one reel and one reel, and they connect together through this tape player, and that's how you played stuff, and that's how we recorded everything back then. And we would have multi-track recorders, uh, usually a four or eight track recorders. If you know anything about music production, this stuff is, uh, fantastic because it changed the way we record music to this day. Multi-tracking, being able to play multiple tracks at the same time. And he had a multi-track, uh, eight-track player there. Uh, and he would engineer it as well. So we're in there, and he and I go into the booth, and then they have the director and everything. He hits record and play, and we go into the, the booth, myself and Don Messick. And, you know, he's so nice. Uh, 
and we read through the spot several times and it was just so exciting because I remember, I'm, I'm, see, I'm, I'm getting excited. I'm like a little kid again because I remember being in the studio with one of my heroes for the first time and working with him. And all, while we're reading and I'm doing my best to, you know, be this young house, hey, yeah, my shingles are the best, you know, all that, whatever. I don't know what the, li- the lines of dialogue were. And he's doing this voice that is very similar to like Papa Smurf. Come along, my little Smurfs. He's doing this little voice of a, of a house. Uh, in my head, I'm just going like, I'm working with Boo Boo Bear. I'm working with Scooby Doo. This is the greatest. Listen to him, James. Study him. I remember my uh, s- telling myself, watch what he does. This is a once in a lifetime chance for you, perhaps, to learn from a master like this. So I watched him. I listened to him. I saw how he handled himself in the studio with the director and the writers and the producers and how gracious he was, even though it was his home studio and he was the one doing everything. He was so gracious and, and, and lovely and I learned from him in that. Just like I watched all my friends that were the DJs that I would work with, Mark Avery, Terry James, Jane Asher, uh, all these wonderful folks, Russ Motla, Roger Mayer, these were DJs that I worked with in the the town of Santa Barbara there and I would watch them all and I would study them all and I would learn from them all and then when I became a voice actor in Hollywood I would do the same anytime I was in the room with Jim Cummings or Billy West or Jess Harnell or Maurice LaMarche or Rob Paulson or you know any of them I all watch them all and, and and study them Corey Burton so I'm watching I'm taking it all in I'm so I just I'm just loving all of this and so I finish up we do the spots, spots go out. I don't, I don't have a copy of it anywhere, I don't believe. I don't think I do, which is a bummer. If I did, I'd play it on here. But anyways, uh, within that week, I think, gosh, I'd really love to talk to him. So I look him up in the phone book because I knew where he lived, you know, and everything. And sure enough, he's listed in the phone book. Bob, Bob Bergen, the voice of Porky Pig. You know Bob Bergen? If you don't, you need to know Bob Bergen did the same thing with Mel Blanc when he was younger. He called him up in the phone and he has a recording of it. It's fantastic. Anyways, so I called Don Messick. I didn't, re- I didn't think like Bob to record mine, but I called Don Messick. Mr. Messick, uh, my name is uh, James Taylor. We worked together on a commercial last week at your home studio. And I was just wondering if I could um, uh, maybe get a, f- a few minutes of your time, buy you lunch and uh, pick your brain about voiceover and everything. He was so nice. I said, sure, we, I, we met at a restaurant down the street from his place there in Montecito. We had breakfast, and for about an hour and a half or so, he told me stories about being a voice actor. Everything from working on Scooby-Doo with the likes of Frank Welker and Casey Kasem and all of these wonderful people, to a uh, time where he gets called in to, uh, <laughs> to voice. They needed a voice match for Droopy Dog, and they were playing the tape of Droopy Dog from the original cartoons of Droopy Dog. He said, we're doing some new Droopy Dogs. Can you match this voice? And he listens and he says, yeah, I think I can. It's me. Don Messick was the original voice of Droopy Dog. So, hello, Joe, what do you know? So, he was just telling me these stories, which the greatest thing about these was they became part of my life later too, where all these same kind of stories, I find like, oh yeah, I experienced the same things in my career. But I didn't, I didn't know that I had this career ahead of me at that time. I just knew that I wanted it and that this man was extremely kind to me to take the time. And so that's why I always try to make time. And that's, we're in a much bigger world now because of social media and YouTube and all. So this is kind of my way of sharing with all of you because not everybody can come and take me out to breakfast. Of course, I'm sure the invitations will pour in now. <laughs> But many a times I do get letters from all of you that say, you know, oh, I'd love to uh, have you mentor me or pick your brain and such. And the reason I create these vlogs is because there's so many of you that ask, I can't, I can't do it with everybody all the time, but I can at least give you the stories that I would tell at a lunch if you sat down at lunch with me. And this is one of them. And so this is the story of my time with Don Messick. And hopefully it's a time where you're learning more about me and someday you can say, you know, I watched this vlog from James Arnold Taylor and I learned this and that about voiceover. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I hope you do. I hope you take the time to go through all the various shows and playlists. So many of you sometimes will be like, I just subscribed, I really like it. Make sure you go through the playlists 
there's different playlists, there's different videos. I literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos that I've shot and put on here about voiceover, about Star Wars, about Ratchet and Clank, about Final Fantasy, about all the various things that I've been able to do as a voice actor taking you behind the scenes of things like me at cons and stuff. So check out those. We have Clone Wars Conversations, which is an interview show I do uh, with my uh, castmates from Clone Wars. There's so much here at the JAT channel. There's JAT365, which is a daily inspirational uh, vlog. Check that out. And thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Please check out more. Please join me back again next time. And we'll see ya. That's all, folks. I'm sorry. That's my little tribute to Bob Bergen, the voice of Porky Pig. That was terrible. Anyways, see ya.